Well, hello there. Uh, that, that's a quote from a friend of mine. I'll explain what that's all about later, but I'm out for a hike in the woods today. This is something I've wanted to do for a long time. Actually, I've needed to do for myself for quite a while now. That is just a simple hike in the woods and a cup of coffee. That's it. No product reviews, just a hike in the woods, a cup of coffee, and a chat between you and I. If you're interested, keep watching. turn my back to the wind so that you can see me. As you can see, the lake is frozen, but just barely. It's not something I'd venture out on. Too much uh, high temperatures, low temperatures, rain, a little bit of snow. Not now, as you'll see when we get back into the woods. But as I stand here, I can hear the ice creaking and cracking, which is like a haunting sound is the best way to describe it. If you've never experienced it before, and when you're out on the ice in the middle of a lake and you hear it start and it starts coming towards you, that sound it can scare the crap out of you if you weren't so sure how thick the ice was. But it is beautiful. Hovering right around minus five degrees Celsius, as I mentioned, late January. Blue sky, well, blue and cloud, but a lot of blue sky, full sun. Loving it. All right, I've been hiking for a while. I think it's time to set up and make some coffee. Okay, that's about the best spot I've found so far. Nice rock to sit on, not too high. I have a pad that I can sit on, keep my butt dry. I'm sheltered from the wind out of the north coming this way. The sun is in my face. Hopefully it doesn't blank out the video, but well, we'll check and see if it does. I'll just move. I can set my little wood stove right here. I've got water nearby. Now I just have to set up and then go out and collect some firewood. All right, first thing is to get my sit pad. You'll recognize this maybe if you've been around for a while. This is a, a homemade wool insulated sit pad or kneeling pad or whatever else you want it to be. This is, okay, I'm, <laughs> here it is. I'm going completely old school to the degree that I can, completely old school. I don't even have my good camera. I'm using my cell phone. So if it looks different, that'd be the reason why. Yes, I do have a wireless mic I never had back in the day, but uh, that you know, you want to enjoy watching this as much as I want to enjoy making this video. So as much as possible, I'm going old school. So let's just start there. What have I got? This is a military surplus, what's known as a Romanian bread bag, an old shoulder bag from the Romanian military army, presumably. And uh, yeah, it's, you know, you don't have to pay much for these if you can search out surplus sites. And it does the job, you know. I, I I have good equipment, but I don't need them. I just like them, but I don't need them. And for my long, long time viewers, this should look familiar. This is my very first IKEA hobo stove. It's really way back when I started, even before YouTube, and I started messing around and making things on my own. Uh, this is the first one I made, and it still works. Why not use it? So that's what I brought out today. Everything purchased here, well, maybe with the exception of one thing, and I'll show you what that is. Everything purchased here came from a thrift store. What am I going to need out of this set? I'll take that out. Stuff sack was made for it. Everything was made for it. All right, so the pot itself, made from a, an old coffee canister I picked up at the thrift store. Inside of the pot, 
is an IKEA hobo stove. Now, here's the thing about this one. When I got this, uh, I was happy to find it because I just wasn't seeing them. But I've discovered since that this is actually a bit smaller than the standard size. That's why I was able to find a pot of a reasonable size that I could fit it down in. It's kind of like a, I don't know, not a mini trend, or a mini IKEA, but a little bit smaller than the regular one. And it is IKEA because it's stamped on the bottom. So this is long before I made any of those videos on how to make IKEA hobo stoves. Let's put the pot. has a wire bale on that I put on myself. Windscreen is made from uh, roof flashing. Little piece of heavy weight aluminum foil from a, like an oven liner type of thing I used to put under it. My coffee canister, of course, I had to put it somewhere. And the only thing I purchased that, you're, that I'm showing you now is this little Coglin's pot grabber. I'm not sure that I'm going to use it, but it makes pouring water so much easier for sure. And they're less than three dollars here at well just about any place that sells sporting goods walmart canadian tire you name it yeah very very inexpensive i need to clear a little bit of space no combustibles uh, somebody saying what are you worried about mark it's the middle of winter um, you're right but maybe it's just good practice to do anyway put my foil piece down my stove That's clean. Pots ready for the water. Probably won't need the windscreen because it's well. There's no wind today, which is really nice. But I will need the pot stands. There we go. So this is a piece of uh, aluminum that I started making pot stands out of back in the day, before I started moving over to stainless steel rulers, which are easier to find and cheaper. This was actually, and I, I don't know how to describe this if anybody would still know what they are, but old school filing cabinets, the ones you pull out the drawer and you have your files set in like this, they sat on racks inside. And some of those racks were made of aluminum bars. And that's what I took out of an old filing cabinet. There's a set of aluminum, an aluminum bar that I cut up to make that rack. All right, let's go get some firewood. Oh, yeah. Dead spruce. Oh, and dry. Good. I thought thicker ones are soft. So even the saw I'm carrying today is my Bucko Professional. Very first thing that I ever had. Christmas gift. Maybe 10 years ago. Still works. I don't know why I don't carry it more often. It's nice and small. not as aggressive as the soap is. It won't need very much. I'm just boiling. And that is probably more than enough firewood. Now, find a little bit of birch bark. All right, looking around, and uh, wouldn't you know it, not a lot of birch trees here, but here is one. And since there's no snow on the ground, it makes the finding of fallen birch bark that much easier. Now, that's a good piece. This one, not so much, but I'll take it once I get a little bit of the other stuff going. This stuff should probably catch on as well, but I think I have everything I need. Let's get started. All right, a little bit of birch bark, old and new. Some finer spruce twigs broke down some of the branches. Put my pot stand over here so I don't confuse it with anything. I have a few more sticks. I highly doubt I'm even going to need them though. Uh, I'm just debating with myself whether or not to do a top-down burn or a bottom-up burn. 
And I think I'll just go old school and do a bottom up burn. So, ooh, that birch bark is powdered. Good, that should catch right on with my ferro rod. Maybe I'll get a few more of these little twigs ready to put in on top of it. But with everything this dry, I don't think I'm gonna have much of an issue getting a fire going. Yeah. Spruce twigs like this are like napalm. Of course, they spark and pop, so you have to be careful when you use them. All right, we'll put that in on top of the birch bar. Okay, for a cerium rod. And, again, an old school. My very first, what I considered, bushcraft knife. Now, I had my uh, Groman knives that I've reviewed in the past, long before I bought this, but when I started to learn that a bushcraft knife supposedly had to have a Scandinavian grind, and that Mora was the one to buy, this is the one I bought. The Mora Robust H. Q. I think that's correct. Putting my oh, that's better. I'll just dump that in. Dump the other stuff in on top of it. Put put these things in before I burn myself. You know, this is actually the reason why I prefer a bottom-up burn. You wouldn't think it, but it's a lot easier. Look at those twigs go. That's wild, eh? Because, for one thing, it's a lot easier to get the fire going. It's a lot easier to get the pot stands on. And then you're not feeding wood the whole time. Well, these sticks are cold. Hopefully they'll catch. But they're dry, so they should. I need some shorter ones. What have I got? All right, things seem to be catching on. I would have been really surprised no matter how frozen the spruce is, if it didn't catch on. I can't say it's a robust fire yet, but it's getting there. Ooh, getting smoked out, of course. All part of the fun. I think what I'll do is I'm going to give that a second to really catch on as I step away from the smoke. And when I'm ready to put my water on, I'll bring it back. That didn't take long. A minute the most. Uh, I just took a look around for some running water and no luck, everything is frozen. Good news is, I brought water. That's not going to be a problem. I think I better put some gloves on. Where is that glove? You know, I can see. <laughs> okay, it's been that long since I've used this kit that there are things about it that I have forgotten, meaning the stove itself. Being a small stove, the only thing that's separating the stove from the ground are a couple of uh, bolts and screws just to give it a little bit of clearance. <laughs> the smoke found me again. And now I remember why I decided to DIY a few more stoves on top of this is because it is not the most stable stove, unless you happen to be on a super flat surface, which I'm not. But if I pay attention to what I'm doing, I should be okay. Yeah, I could have brought something newer, but I wanted to go with the oldest one I had. All right, that's only going to take a minute or two to boil up the two cups of water I have in there at the most, and uh, we'll get set up to make my coffee. Water's boiling quickly. Let's get some coffee made here. So how old school is this? At least for me, right? I mean, if you've been following my channel from the beginning, I've always talked about the AeroPress, and this is a, a classic old AeroPress that I've had. Again, purchased at a thrift store. A mug, 
Sold in Canada by Mountain Equipment Co-op, but it's just a double wall plastic mug, again, purchased at a thrift store. Now the coffee is not old school, because I couldn't see myself denying my favorite coffee, which is Rampage. And it will be a little bit strong. Now there's, uh, I've often talked about making coffee the way, there's two ways, there's the inverted method and the more uh, traditional method, which is to put the filter in on the bottom, on top of the cup, put the coffee in, pour the water in, put the plunger in, give it a little bit of time, and then plunger it down. So that's in fact the way I am gonna go. Now, can I get this off without a glove? I don't think so. Where did I lay my gloves? Here we are. Let's see it. All right. Lots of boiling hot water, and uh, you know, with two gloves, I won't need that Coglin's font grabber. Just need to be a little careful. Quick stir, and <laughs> thrift store spoon, right? These are all the things I still had them. A little bit more water. There we go. Put the top on before it drains through. And that'll hold the coffee from draining through. And I'll give it a couple minutes, three, four minutes, and then I'll plunger it down. And I think the coffee is probably ready. Let's give it a nice gentle push. I can smell it and it smells amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I was looking for. Probably can't see it, but uh, I'll let you know how it tastes. I don't think I'll even put the cap on yet. It's uh, let it cool off a tiny bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Why don't I do this more often? But it is a little bit hot. At the same time, I don't want it to cool off too much while we have our chat. So, coffee side or coffee chat. That's what this is now, I guess. Um, okay, so when I opened the video up, I said I really wanted to make this video. And then I added to that I really needed to make this video. And let me explain that. And then I'll tell you why I'm making it now, because I think that's equally important. So... I enjoy going out into the woods. I mean, that's the whole reason I started. I was going out into the woods long before I, I started watching YouTube videos. And then I started watching YouTube videos. And then I met up with some YouTubers that were famous in our local area. And I was inspired to go out and make YouTube videos. So I did. And my original YouTube videos, if anybody wants to go back and look at how amateurish they are, not that I'm highly professional now, mind you, but if you want to look at back in the day, long before I had good equipment of anything, let alone camera, was an old uh, point-and-shoot camera. Boy, that, that was a terrible quality camera. And then I went to a video camera. And then I went to the one I have now, the Canon M50. Today, I'm just going really old school with, a, with my cell phone, which is an old cell phone as well. So hopefully the sound is coming across well. But what I was doing back then was just recording my experiences. I was going out and enjoying myself, and I wanted to share that. That's what it was all about. I just wanted to share my time in the woods. And at the same time, I was learning new foraging skills, a really basic and essential bushcraft skill is foraging. I was learning mushrooms, not that I'm really good at it now, but I was learning all kinds of medicinal and edible plants. And I was sharing that with you, my viewers. Then along came the first product offer for a product review. And I have to tell you, and I know every YouTube product review wrote there will, out there will tell you this. First time that somebody says, hey, would you like to re review my whatever it is? It, it's an amazing experience because you're saying somebody thinks that I have enough talent and enough skill to sell a product, basically is what they're asking you to do. So it's a real boost to the ego. So you say yes. Well, that can lead you down 
a path that sometimes is really hard to pull back from. And it gets to be a lot of work. Now, contrary to what a lot of people have said in my comments, not a lot, a few people say, easy work to get free products, you don't have to pay for them. Okay, yes, you're right. I don't pay for most of the items that I review. Some of them I do. Some, a lot of them are gifts to me from uh, family. Some of them I purchase myself, but a lot of them are supplied by the company. But anybody thinks that they are free is sadly mistaken because YouTube reviewers will know this. There's a lot of work that goes into making a video. All the research behind the product, scripting out at least the key talking points that you want to make, getting out, recording all the scenes, getting back, doing all the editing, and then uploading the video. Um, likely for most, now there are some items that I kind of break even on, but for a lot of the items that I review, I could put a bot them. For the time I spent on those reviews, if I had been working, um, I could have purchased those items myself with less effort. So they're not free. So the question, I guess, is why do you do it? Well, part of the reason is to try new things out, especially wood stoves. I'm, a, I'm, as you probably know, I'm a bit of a wood stove geek, a bit of a collector, fanatic, and I, and I like uh, trying out wood stoves. That's kind of where everything started, is with wood stoves, and then knives, and then on and on and on. And what I found is, is if I was going to buy something myself, and I wanted to know, should I invest my money, how am I going to find out if it's any good? Well, the only real way to tell is to watch YouTube videos, reviewers. But then you have to weed through all the reviews to see is this honest, is, and maybe it is honest, but is it thorough enough? Does it give me the information I want? Are they showing me not only the pros, but are they showing me the cons? So that was my ethos, my uh, method of operation, modus operandi from my police background, that I wanted to follow through with. When I review a product, I want to talk about what's good about it, but I also want to talk about what's bad upon it, about it, at least in my opinion. And I hope I come across as being honest in my reviews, because what I'm hoping to do is give you the information that you are looking for to make a decision about investing your money in purchasing it. Okay, some people have told me that they weren't interested in buying something, but after I reviewed it, they went out and purchased it. That's not my intent. I don't want you to go out and spend money because I review something and you think, if Mark likes it, it's got to be good. If I say I like it, I like it. If I say I don't like it, you're right, I don't like it. But at no time do I want you to go out and buy it because of I said it was a good item. I mean, if you're looking for it, that's one thing. But if you're not looking for it, Please don't buy something just because I like it myself. All right, so what I'm getting to is I went down that road of getting into reviews and it became a lot of work. And honestly, it takes a lot of the joy out of coming out here. A hike on any given day is not about going out and enjoying the woods, which is what it should be, right? It was more about what am I going to say? Where am I going to set up? How am I going to fit this? Is the weather going to be good? Can I get this? Can I, how much can I get done? Is Do I have to go and do it again? And that happens once in a while when you have to go back out a second time or even a third time to get a review done or any video for that matter. So to be able to come out like this with no agenda other than to have a chat, that's a real treat. The only time other than today that I get to come out and not carry a camera. Well, all right, here's I am carrying a camera, right? I know is when I lead guided hikes for the Friends of Blue Mountain Birch Coast Lakes in this area. And I'm a, I'm a, a hike leader and I enjoy taking people out and showing them nature. And there is no none of my YouTube involved in that at all. They don't even know I have a YouTube channel because I separate it. That gives me joy of being in the woods and sharing those with those people hands on right there. Otherwise, most of my videos, yes, have been around reviews. I need to make a concerted, conscious effort to do more of just this just getting out and sitting and chatting, sharing my thoughts about being in the woods. All right, that's why I came out today. But why today? Why today specifically? Well, it could have been any day, but it the push, the incentive, the motivation to get out here sooner than later came from a friend of mine on YouTube. He's a new to YouTube person. His name is Steve. He has a YouTube channel called The Drifting Spore. 
He lives up in Cumberland County, Nova Scotia, a bit of a distance, probably about an hour and a half, two hours, Steve, probably two, if, uh, well, it's at least two, right? So it's a bit of a drive to get there. We have never met in person, but we've chatted plenty of time online and in emails and that type of thing. And when I came across Steve's channel, I was, I saw myself in my early days. And Steve goes out into the woods and just does his thing, makes a coffee, shares his time in the woods with everybody on YouTube, just for the joy of it, just to share what he's enjoying about being in the woods. No reviews, just his time, his experiences out there. And he's a mushroom hunter, mushroom forager. And I think he's, he says that he got started because of me. I don't know. Steve, if you have, you've gone past my skill knowledge, or at least you've found many more mushrooms of different types than I've ever been able to find. Hopefully someday we'll get together and we'll go out for a mushroom forage and uh, see what else we can find while we're out there. Maybe record our experiences together. So I'm telling you that because Steve reminded me about what it is to get out and enjoy the woods without having that other agenda of having to take things out to review. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not stopping reviews. I will be reviewing. I got a lot of stuff yet to review. But every so often I have to come out and do it this way just to take the pressure off myself so I don't feel that every time I go to the woods, it has to be about a review. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for mo that motivation. And uh, folks, if you want to see someone who goes to the woods just for the joy of it, go over to Steve's channel. I know he would appreciate it. And his whole motivation is exactly that, sharing his joy of being in the woods, making coffee. <sighs> okay. Really? That's all I wanted to share with you today. What I will do, though, is open up to you that you can put in the comments your thoughts around this. I know people tell me I'm some kind of a corporate sellout. Uh, that hurts a little bit because I'm trying my best to be as honest and thorough in my reviews. But there are people that are going to be negative regardless, so I, I can't help that. And uh, that's easy enough to bypass them and keep going. But if you want to see more of this, say so. If you have anything else you want to share with me, I'd be happy to talk with you and chat with you about it. I think what I do before my coffee gets too much colder and close this video with a truly heartfelt get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.